you may be seated. God is here, amen? You guys showed up to worship and to pray and it's evident in the presence of God in this place. Well, it's a humble privilege that I have to share with you tonight a word that has been stirring on my heart for weeks. We do remember Pastor Carter and Dr. Conlon as they are away ministering. We pray that God would anoint them and use them boldly to speak the truth in this hour that we're in. For those of you that are also joining online, I'd like to remind you later in the service that we will be taking in communion together. So if you'd like to get juice and crackers, please do so and we will partake at the end of the service tonight. Also, I'd like to invite anybody online that can hear my voice. There are revival servicing taking place at Summit on October the 23rd through the 25th. And I would like to invite you to come to that. What you're sensing tonight, God is here all of the time meeting with us in miraculous ways. So if you're able October the 23rd through the 25th to come out to Summit, we welcome you for those revival services. You know, this morning I turned on the news as maybe many of you do sometimes or you turn the radio on or you go to your phone and you look at social media and there's so much desperation and devastation that's happening in the world right now between wars and natural disasters, between political and economic unrest. Everywhere you turn, it looks like desperation upon desperation upon desperation. And not only globally and nationally, God, as a nation, but I believe in our hearts, there's a sense of desperation. We're not fully sure if we're gonna make it. We have fears that the ones we love may not make it. Is it possible to have hope again? There's a sense of desperation that I believe is looming in all of our hearts. And desperation is not anything new. When you look throughout history and the Bible, you look at different people groups and nationalities, there have been constant hours of desperation throughout all of time. But in my opinion, the darkest and most devastating hour is when Jesus was brought before the people, beaten, mocked, spat upon. He was sentenced to an unjust crucifixion. He was betrayed, left alone, hung upon a criminal's cross with a sign above his head that said, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, this is what your kingship looks like. You wanna talk about a desperate hour. There was no greater desperation than I believe in that moment when onlookers didn't fully know why he was there or how he got there. Even those who believed lost hope. Even the hopeful began to be discouraged. And it said even it got dark and the earth itself shook. And in that moment when what seemed like the hope of the world lay upon a criminal's cross, unjustly ridiculed, unjustly hanging there, but he chose for you and I to be there he chose to hang upon that, him, that criminal's cross. And as he lay there breathing his last breath, he said for you and for me, it is finished. It is finished. And I just imagine in that moment, a mixture of silence, of tears, of wailing, of shock, of disappointment, of mockery, for a victory that the enemy thought they won. But beloved, in that moment in history, in that greatest hour of desperation, the unexpected power of God moved in. For not only did he die and was he buried, but he was raised to life again. And not only was he raised to life, but he gave us the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you can please turn with me to Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. And it said, it says this, after his sufferings, meaning his crucifixion on the cross, he presented himself to the disciples and gave them many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them a command and he said this, 
Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hit him from their sight. What a glorious moment in time. Not only did he die, not only was he buried, but he rose again. And then he spent 40 days with his disciples, walking with them, talking with them, showing them the proof of his nail pierced hands, talking to him about the kingdom and what was to come, to wait upon the Holy Spirit because it's coming as it was promised. We know in Acts chapter two, the powerful story of Pentecost, when those 120 were in that upper room waiting as they have been instructed to do, waiting to see how God was gonna move, waiting with expectation, what's going to be next? We know that we're not gonna know the day or the hour. We see nothing but devastation and destruction. We see the hope that was just hung upon the cross, yet he came and he met with us and he reminded us and he encouraged us that I'm gonna send you the power of the Holy Spirit. And as they waited in that upper room, it says like a mighty rushing wind came in and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And those 120 people were never the same again. They experienced something that only the power of the Holy Spirit can bring. They had authority, they had boldness, they had faith revive in their hearts again, that yes, it's been a desperate hour. Yes, it's been confusing. Yes, it went even dark and the earth shook, but he rose again. And not only did he raise again, but as we sit in this room with tongues of fire and we speak in other tongues, the Holy Spirit empowers us to do what was not possible 20 minutes ago. And as we begin to understand this, I believe that we will walk in an authority and in a power that whatever hour we face, it will be well with our souls. That if we understand the power and the fullness of the Holy Spirit, no matter the hour that we face, no matter how dark it gets, no matter how desperate our thoughts are, no matter how much war and rumors of war there will be, no matter what famine we, we participate in or have to walk through or persecution that we will face, if we know that we have the power of the Holy Spirit, no matter the hour, We can walk in life and life in abundance, amen? Turn with me please to Acts chapter three, verse one through 10. So after Pentecost happens and the power of the Holy Spirit falls, this is a story I really wanna talk to you about this evening. In Acts chapter three, verse one, it says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he put, was put there every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from him. Then Peter said, Silver or gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. You see, this is the first miracle after Jesus ascended into heaven. The first recorded miracle after Pentecost took place. These two disciples going about their daily lives, entering in the temple just to pray. See a lame man, who's been begging since the time he was born. And I would imagine this wouldn't have been an unfamiliar scene. I don't know if you've ever traveled to underdeveloped countries, but there's often beggars on every street corners. I remember one time I went to India and the the begging system there is almost like an industry. 
I remember walking the streets and this young girl put this baby in my arm who had a, a severed limb and asking for more money. So in many cultures, in many situations, begging is just a way of life. It's something that you always see. It's part of the ordinary custom of the day. But why was this day different? Why did Peter and John see this man in a different way? Why did this familiar scene all of a sudden become supernatural in an instant? And I believe at this moment, Peter and John did not just see a man with a tin cup in his hand begging for silver and gold. In this moment, they saw through the power of the Holy Spirit what was only possible through him, that this man could be made whole by the power of Jesus' name. By just the mere mention of his name, that beggar with a tin cup in his hand no longer had to be lame and broken and begging. In a moment of time, he just, Peter simply says, look at us, what you're wanting the kindness, the, the little measly silver and gold, it's not gonna get you anywhere but through the day. It's just your next fix. It's just your next high. It's just your next stopgap. But Peter says, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. That's all he says, in the name of Jesus, walk. There was no three line sermon, there was no convincing. The beggar wasn't even looking to be saved. The beggar wasn't even looking to be rescued. But Peter and John saw beyond a tin cup and silver and gold. They saw what was possible by the power of the Holy Spirit and the mention of Jesus' name. Beloved, we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We were given the gift to walk in power and authority. We were given the gift and the ability to see those broken and outcast, addicted and left marginally to the side, to not look at them as beggars with tin cups, but to look at them through the power of the Holy Spirit and saying, in the name of Jesus, walk. In the name of Jesus, walk. You see, it wasn't any longer because the son of man was on the earth, that the lame were healed, that the blind would receive sight, that the sick would recover. It was by his name. He was sitting already at the right hand of the father. And it was just merely by the mention of his name that this lame man walked. And you and I need to more readily speak and declare his name. It is nice and right and proper that when we end a prayer, we say in Jesus' name. But can we also say Jesus' name in the darkest hours and the most hopeless of situations when healing needs to happen? Can we simply declare his name? That in the name of Jesus, addiction be broken. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, may depression and anxiety fall to the wayside as Crystal testified today. That was in the power of Jesus' name. That was in a surrendered life saying, God, I give you my tin cup. I give you the quick fixes. I give you what I think I need and I exchange it for what you know that I need. And in verse seven, it says that Peter and John take him by the right hand and they helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw them, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness, we made this man walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus. You handed him over to be killed. You disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and the righteous one 
and ask that a murderer be released to you instead. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus. This man whom you see and you know was made strong. It's in the name of Jesus and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him. You can see. Beloved, this is an incredible story that should ignite our hearts in faith that through the power of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus did on the cross for us, declaring that it was finished, declaring that it was complete, declaring that what he set out to do had been accomplished. The gift that the Holy Spirit has been bestowed upon each one of us that dwells inside of every believer. It's by the name of Jesus that strongholds are broken, that chains are broken, that people are restored, that marriages are brought back to life again. I just love the thought, Peter questions them, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare? You think this was us? And maybe it's because those onlookers were saying to themselves, didn't Jesus die? We killed him. We watched him die. We saw them bury him. What is going on? We put an end to the miraculous. Do you think that's what they could have been saying? We thought we were done with all of these miracles. We thought we were done with resurrection power. We thought we put an end to all of this mess and mayhem. We hung it to a cross. We watched it die. We buried it and we guarded it but oh, the power of God that says, no way, no way, I shall live and not die. You see, yes, he was crucified, but he was also glorified. And that which they thought they stopped, the miraculous that seemed to offend them will never cease to be by the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been given the right and we've been given the authority to say the name of Jesus. In John 14, 13, it says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the father may be glorified in the son. You may ask of me anything in my name and I will do it. You ask of me anything and I will do it. That is what his promise says in John chapter 14. You know, beloved, when I'm at work and I I send an email or I give a a directive to accomplish something, most of the time it moves forward, things happen. But on occasion, I've got a name drop. The boss wants X and Y to be done. Then the mountains move and the seas part and things happen because the mention of someone's name. And can I tell you that God, as his children, he has allowed us to name drop in every situation, in every occasion that we will face. We say, God, I don't know how it's possible, but in your name, this is dark and confusing, but in your name, I don't have the grace, I don't have the strength to carry on, but in your name, you have the given the right and the authority to use the name of God for anything that you have need of. And he says that he hears you and he answers you and he moves on your behalf and the miraculous take place. People walk, beloved. People are changed. Minds are set free. Addiction is broken. Marriages are healed. A love from a father to a a child is restored in the name of Jesus and him alone. You see the 10 cups only satisfy for a moment. The silver and gold is not what you have need of. It's all you know to ask for but we're learning a new way. We're learning to ask in the name of Jesus. I don't want silver and gold. I don't want a temporary fix. I don't wanna feel good just for today. I don't wanna come back here again tomorrow. Then let us speak in the name of Jesus. Let us ask him believing that he will answer. Let us ask with the power of the authority that has been given us, that anything we ask in his name, it shall be done. Do we believe that beloved? Do we know that to be true at the depths of who we are? 
If we don't know it, may we ask to know it. May we come to a loving father and say, this is hard for me. I don't understand the full measure that has been given to me. He will be faithful to walk with you, to reveal to you the depths of his love, the depths of his forgiveness, the depths of his power with just your little bit of faith and asking him, he will be faithful. And in my closing, just want to say that his name moved mountains and part seas. And in our desperate places and in our desperate hours, it's time to call upon the name of Jesus. If you didn't hear anything I said tonight, that is okay. But remember this one thing. When you face situations that seem impossible, when you face desperate moments, as Crystal shared tonight, She was in a desperate place, feeling alone that no one saw her. In her darkest hour, she cried out to God and he was searching for her already. He was already looking for her. He was already watching her. And she raised her hand in surrender and said, God, would you reveal yourself to me? And how many of us in this room and those of us online have that same story? That God, you found me and you changed me. I'm still a work in progress, but in your name, I will be everything that you intended me to be. When we say in Jesus' name, free me, he says, I'll do it. When we say in Jesus' name, protect me from myself and my desires that are not from you, he says, you got it. In Jesus' name, change the way I see people, he says, done. In Jesus' name, give me a love for my spouse and my children, no problem. In Jesus' name, help me forgive, he says I will. In Jesus' name, give me peace that surpasses all understanding, he says you got it. He is a good father. He is a good father. He is a faithful friend. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Anything we ask in his name, be it small or big, he hears and he answers. Let us be a people who believe again that no matter how dark the hour, no matter how dark my heart and my mind may be, in Jesus' name, walk. May we be a people who don't see beggars with 10 cups, but we see people as whole and free men because that is who they are. They were never meant to beg all the days of their life for a little morsel of hope. They were meant to walk and to dance and to leap like this beggar did. He went into the temple courts and said, God, you and you alone can do this. It's you and you alone who have restored me. It's you and you alone who have enabled me to walk. May that ever be upon our lips that in the name of Jesus, it shall be done. May you stand with me and let's go into a time of prayer and then we'll go into a time of communion. Father, we thank you for this word, for it's your word. We thank you for what you did upon the cross, what you willingly accomplished for each and every one of us. That in that last moment, you said it is finished. Everything that you intended for us became our portion. The veil was torn in two and we were able to have complete access to you. God, I thank you, Lord, that you not only died, but you were buried and you rose again. And we thank you, God, that you left us with the gift of your Holy Spirit. So God, I ask, Lord, that you baptize us in your Holy Spirit afresh and anew to believe you for that which seems impossible. It didn't look like he should be able to walk, but in the mention of your name, he walked. It didn't look like we should be sane, but in the mention of your name, you brought sanity. It didn't look like our marriages should be restored, but when we asked you in Jesus' name, bring restoration, you did. God, when we asked for our wayward children to be brought back to you, you looked after them and you brought them back. God, it's by you and you alone. May we be believers and people 
who put our faith and trust in you. God, give us the grace to do so. Give us the understanding to take you at your word that anything we ask in your name, it shall be done. Oh God, I pray that that be our song all the days of our life. God, I'm not perfect, but anything I ask in your name, it shall be done. We pray all of these things in your mighty name. Amen and amen.